Hello gang, how are we today? Hope you're doing well. Welcome to Herstory episode 6. We're on to two hands. This is very, very exciting. So, basically today I want to do a video in celebration of Pride Month because um, it's Pride Month and it should be celebrated. Um, I am a straight, cisgendered, whatever. I'm an ally of the LGBTQIA community, a very strong ally. And um, I think it is only right and fair that Pride Month and 50 years since the Stonewall Riots, we do a little bit of history on the Queen Bee herself, Marsha P. Johnson. I hope you're happy with my choice for who I've picked for Pride Month. I, I, I did kind of wonder if I should do Anne Lister with uh, Gentleman Jack being on the telly at the moment, but I thought, no, I'm going to take it back to the roots of Pride itself and we're going to go for Marsha P. Johnson. So I have my notes here and we're ready to rock and roll. So... Marsha P. Johnson. Born Malcolm Michaels Jr. on August the 24th, 1945 in Elizabeth, New Jersey. One of seven children. Dad worked at the General Motors factory and mum was a housewife. They all, the whole family attended the African Methodist Episcopal Church. Um, and Marsha remained a devout Christian throughout her life. She first began wearing dresses at the age of five and her mother promptly put a stop to that, saying that being homosexual is like being lower than a dog. Yes, but, you know, them's were the times, right? She graduated from Edison High School in 1963 and left home for New York City with $15 and a bag of clothes to her name that was that was all she had she finally made it to New York and started waitressing while she was living on the streets and she moved to Greenwich Village which was kind of a hubbub of gay activity at the time in 1966 um, but still quite quite an underground community she initially called herself Black Martha, but later decided on Marsha P. Johnston as her drag name. The P stood for Pay It No Mind, which I love, absolutely love. And I'm completely convinced that that is where RuPaul, I'm wearing my RuPaul t-shirt today. Um, that is where RuPaul got her line from of, if they ain't paying your bills, pay them bitches no mind. Um, absolutely sure that must be where it came from. So the Marsha P. Johnson, a P stood for pay it no mind. Um, invariably identified as gay, uh, a transvestite and a drag queen. Um, transgender wasn't really talked about then. Uh, it wasn't really seen as a thing. If you dressed as a woman, you were a transvestite or a drag queen. There wasn't really a... A conversation about people being sort of stuck in the wrong body or anything like that so uh, it's 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 difficult to know whether Marsha was trans or not but she chose to live her life as Marsha in New York openly and proudly so I, I think it's I think it's safe to say that Marsha was probably trans um, so basically People don't put a label on it. They see her as gender fluid or non-conformist. Um, but the more we kind of look back on it and the struggles that she had, which I'll go into later, the more we think probably she she was trans. Um, her style of drag was very cheap. She she was homeless. She couldn't afford to, to go and buy pretty dresses. So she had friends who made dresses for her. She would go to the flower district in Manhattan at the end of the day when all the stalls are closed and pick up 
all the leftover flowers and she was renowned for wearing flowers in her hair which is why i have the flowers in my hair today as a tribute to Marsha. basically every picture you see of her she has flowers in her hair um she was very tall and slender and she had red plastic heels which must have hurt a lot and wore really brightly colored wigs so she was not afraid to stand out by any means what Marsha is really famous for is being involved in the stonewall riots of 69 and basically spearheading the beginning of the gay rights liberation movement um so the stonewall riots are something i could do oh, i could spend an hour talking about stonewall so i'm not going to go into a huge amount of depth of stonewall please go away research it look it up it's basically where gay pride started and where it came from in the early morning of june the 28th 1969 uh, the police raid a gay bar called the stonewall inn at Previously, up until very recently, Stonewall had only allowed gay men in and it was considered one of the more uh, liberal bars when it opened its doors to allow women and, and queens in as well. Um, and the police didn't really like this kind of inclusivity, like raids on gay bars were not a, not a rare thing in, in the 60s, unfortunately. They were, they were pretty routine um but this this raid really quickly got out of hand um the stonewall inn ended up being burnt to the ground um it turned into an uprising and a protest there were spontaneous demos and marches through greenwich village which carried on for up to a week afterwards uh, and johnson was one of the three people who were really spearheading the pushback against the police the other two people were zaza nova and jackie hormona let's not forget their part in this as well so johnson is reported to have thrown a shot glass at a mirror when they tried to arrest her and screamed i got my civil rights or a brick well she threw a brick depending on your source uh, and on the second night she apparently climbed up a lamppost and dropped a bag with a brick in it on top of a police cop car and shattered the windscreen so she wasn't afraid to get her hands dirty. Um, but basically Stonewall, as I say, I'm, I'm not going to get massively into it. But Stonewall, the riot at Stonewall kicked off um, marches, demonstrations, pride parades, um, which then carried on like every year and spread throughout the globe and started the pride movement as we know it so stonewall is very important and this year it's 50 years since stonewall so um what better time to talk about it go away look it up if you don't already know all about it after stonewall marcia joined the gay liberation front she participated in the first christopher street liberation pride rally on the first anniversary of stonewall in june 1970 she and her close friend sylvia rivera who you have to go and look at Sylvia. Her story is amazing as well. They co-founded the Street Transvestite Action Revolutionaries, or STAR for short. The two were a visible presence at gay liberation marches and radical political actions. With Rivera, Marsha established the STAR House, uh, which was a shelter for gay and trans street kids in 1972. They paid for it all completely by themselves. They paid the rent themselves through um, money they made as sex workers. So, uh, and they acted as mothers to children that had been thrown out of their homes or um, who were homeless or down on their luck or just generally needed a mum. Very, very similar to the Paris's burning houses of the 90s and the balls and everything like that, but... This was 20 years earlier and um, there wasn't that kind of performance aspect to it. It was she she was just her and Sylvia were mothers to a lot of kids that were lost and struggling to find their way and struggling with their sexual identity. And they may have they may be homeless, they may have drug problems, all that kind of thing. They took them in and they fed them and they looked after them and they paid for it all by themselves. 
um, by by working the streets. Um, Marsha was arrested many times for her sex work, over a hundred times, supposedly. Uh, she was also shot once in the late 70s. She was really open about her mental health struggles and could possibly have been schizophrenic. There seem to be two dominant personalities. There's Marsha and there's Malcolm. Um, and that was see seen as schizophrenia back then. But maybe now we would characterise it differently and say that Marsha was trans and she was struggling with these two identities of Malcolm and Marsha. And, you know, that's not schizophrenia. That's not having two personalities. That's struggling to come to terms with who you really are. Um... But that's just that's speculation. That's that's my part in that. She was she was very open about the fact that um she she was having a hard time. Um so shortly after the nineteen ninety two Pride Parade, um on July the sixth, nineteen ninety two, <laughs> Marsha's body was found floating in the Hudson River. Um her death was initially ruled as a suicide. Her friends said that she was not suicidal. There was a massive wound to the back of her head, like she'd had her skull caved in with a brick. Apparently a witness saw a neighbour, a neighbourhood resident fighting with Marsha on July the 4th. This is two days before she's found July the 4th. He, he's seen fighting with her using homophobic slurs and later bragged to someone in a bar that he killed a drag queen called Martha. The police weren't interested in investigating the, get, the death of a gay black man. They didn't really bother looking into it. They didn't really care. Um, Marsha was cremated and her ashes were released over the river by her friends and they had a quiet service at a church nearby to say goodbye to her. That's not the end of Martha's story, of course. Um, apart from being part of the birth of the Pride Liberate and Gay Liberation Movement. Um, in November 2012, activist Mariah Lopez succeeded in getting the New York Police Department to reopen Marsha's case and investigate it as a possible homicide. And finally, May the 30th, 2019, last month, it was announced that Marsha and Sylvia will be honoured with monuments near the state, um, near the site of the Stonewall Inn. So that's major and amazing and about time really if you go to Greenwich Village in New York um there Marsha's everywhere she's in the street art she there's mosaics of her she is she's everywhere um she's a legend and she's inspired so many people to live their true authentic self and not not care what society thinks of them and just live to be happy um i recently watched the death and life of marsha p johnson on netflix it's a documentary sylvia's in it as well as many other friends of marsha's and it's a fascinating insight into just how difficult life was at that time it's difficult to be gay now but to be gay and black in america in the 60s while Martin Luther King is down in the southern states giving his I Have a Dream speech, these two are happening at the same time. It's not good to be black in America, let alone to be gay and black and dressed like a woman. It's a really insightful documentary and it, it, helped, it made me realise how far we've come, um, how far we still have to go, but definitely how far we've come. RuPaul, who um, don't can't see my top. Call me mother. So, um, RuPaul or Mama Ru, as she's called, because she has spawned this um amazing television show, RuPaul's Drag Race, um, which has kind of brought drag into the mainstream now and made lots of people more conscious about the art form, and it's opening up a lot of conversations and. Um, I think it's really, really great for the movement. RuPaul described Marsha as the true drag mother, which is quite a 
quite an accolade coming from Mama Roo, who is the mother of, I don't know, something, something silly, like 120 odd queens that have been through her show now. Um, so yeah, that is the, the, the life and untimely demise of Marsha P. Johnson. Um, she was photographed by Andy Warhol. She performed and sang as part of a New York-based group called Hot Peaches um, from 1972 to the 90s. And she burned really bright. She died at the age of 46. She burned really bright in her short life. And I think she helped a lot of people come to terms with who they were and that it's okay to be who you are. And no matter what people say, pay it no mind. You've got to live the best way for you and to make yourself happy. I think Marsha is iconic. Every time I see a photo of her, a drawing of her, a mosaic of her, it makes, it just makes me smile because although she met with such a tragic end, she's beautiful. Her, her smile just reaches right down inside of you and there is something in the way that she looks at you in these photos and these drawings that's like, you you be you and it's okay to be you and you are beautiful. So there we go, getting deep and philosophical. But it is Pride Month and it's very important for us to be having those conversations and having these discourses and these discussions and being open-minded and listening to people. Um, if you know any interesting facts about Marsha that I may have left out, please leave a comment below. Um, obviously, it goes without saying, if anybody leaves any homophobic comments on this page, I'm going to scream. And you will be in my bad books, and you're generally a bad human, so don't do that. So yeah, here we go. Happy Pride Month, everybody. What, whoever you fancy, whoever you love, however you dress, however you feel on the inside, you are lovely the way you are and be proud of who you are. And even if you're completely sure in yourself, you know you're straight, you know you're gay, or you're confused and you don't know, that's okay as well. Time will tell and you can figure it out. And hopefully you will have loving and supportive people around you while you do that. And if you don't, find those people, find that tribe. That is one of the wonderful things about being gay is that you get to find your own tribe and you get to make your own family. Um, and that goes for anybody, not, not just people that are gay, but people that are bullied, people that are different in any way. You can find your tribe and um, make your own family. So yeah, I'm going to start waffling now because I could literally talk about the pride movement for years so I'm going to stop now but I hope you've enjoyed the life of Marsha P Johnson I hope you will go away and find out more about her and Sylvia and I hope that next time you attend a pride parade or you see a pride parade you realize that pride came from this riot it came from this struggle the first pride was a riot um that's really important thing to remember while we're living it up and getting drunk and 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 loving each other we we need to remember where this came from and and why it happened and how far there is still to go so without putting it down on everything have an amazing pride month wherever wherever you're going whatever you're doing have an incredible pride month love to everybody out there love 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 rupaul everybody say love and I will see you next week with episode seven of History. As always, let me know who you want to uh, see an episode on. And give me a like, give me a comment, give me a subscribe, all that good stuff. I bid you adieu. Pay it no mind.